What's up, y'all? It's cold as a bitch out here. I'm very bundled up, very suited up. It's been a while since I just tapped in with y'all. Uh, the last emergency bro talk we had was a little uh, urgent in relating to exercise just because I didn't want my favorite exercise for bench press to become a meme lift. So some tough love was required. That's what these bro talks are about though, man. Not the tough love thing. That's not always called for. Um, it's really to engage with y'all on a more personal level than just, you know, posting training clips and lectures and shit like that. I like to think that that is one of the, the aspects that makes the Bald Omni Man brand what it is, but that's not me completely. Like, I'm not just training. I'm a guy that's been through a lot, has a lot to talk to y'all about, so on. First and foremost, rest in peace. Miura Sensei, I miss you. I miss the work that you did. Your work is going to stand the test of time. It's going to be here long after you're gone. There are going to be many, many generations of strugglers that are going to read Berserk. Hopefully your assistants um, can finish the story that you started, if that was in your will to do so. Rest in peace, DMX. He was another uh, inspiration of mine. He passed around the same time. That shit was very, and obviously you don't know these people personally, but you resonate with their work and you become emotionally attached to their work and what their work means to you and what their work allows you to go out and create yourself. For me, I was always someone that, um, was used to the struggle, I guess you could say. You know, I, I grew up, and I've, I've spoken about this, probably the like the most specifically I've spoken about it was on that interview with Alex, just like a off the cuff thing. You would have had to watch to the end to, to hear about it. But I was like, man, I'm a person where I used to sleep with roaches and rats and shit. We used to not have the fucking utilities on when it'd be cold as fuck like this, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm a person where I don't need much other than the bare necessities i can have a lot more look where i'm at now you know what i'm saying this is a, a luxury apartment i lived here before this youtube shit and before a lot of things started taking off for me i got people reaching out for sponsorships and shit like that i don't say that to brag but you can put your head down and achieve anything in my opinion, as long as you're repetitious and you're doing the right kind of work consistently. That's something that I talked about in Alex's video regarding strength standards, okay? So what did I say? I said that someone could reasonably expect to be this strong within five to seven years. If they do everything right from day one and do so consistently, they eat in a calorie surplus and so on. That belief and that truth that I reached stems from just how I've always approached things from childhood. Like I said, wasn't able to have much growing up. Never take anything away from my mother um, in the ways that my father provided as well. They did everything that they could for us to have everything that we needed. And sometimes one or two things that we wanted, but I wasn't that kid in school that always had uh, new clothes and new shoes and shit like that. If you've never walked around with a pair of shoes that are talking and free for those that don't know what that colloquialism means it means that you're fucking the flaps of your shoes are doing this shit that's the kind that that was my reality as a kid depending upon you know what i'm saying so i was a person where if you wanted anything extra or extraordinary or above your station you had to go out and get it it's not anything my parents told me that's just something that you came to realize you either going to do it or you were not going to have access to anything outside of like the bare necessity. So I wanted to help my parents got a job. I wanted to get a weight sit, saved up for it. I wanted these things that weren't given to me and I worked for it. I did the right kind of work. I saved, I didn't spend my money, so on. Training was just like something really easy for me to, to um, apply myself to. Cause like I said, my mindset's already been there. 
And that mindset allowed me to start with no subscribers at the beginning of 2021 to now the better part of 12,000 subscribers. I, um, I can't say that I didn't see it coming just because I know that I have something special to offer to people. I know that I'm an individual where there's only one me. You know what I'm saying? There's only one bald Omni man. There's not anybody, even if they're as knowledgeable as me, they can't offer what I do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very appreciative. But in terms of where the channel started, I guess I could say I had just, not just, I, my back had been broken for a while. It was just getting back to a hundred percent in terms of okay i can start to do certain things with my lower body again and that was a really low point in my life in terms of walking away from friends walking away from uh my uh, my my means of getting uh, earning a living reassessing how i earn a living things like that it's a real dark period of life for me man and i'm not a person where anymore anyway that when I'm in one of those low periods in my life that I'm self-destructive I had my whole childhood to do that shit you know like I've been expelled from school I didn't finish high school you know what I mean um I've been suspended countless of times um and all those things were due not to anything that I was born with I'm not an idiot I got expelled and didn't finish high school and it's called a GED I don't know what this shit stands for but I went and maxed out the fucking GED the week after you know what I mean so it's not because I'm an idiot it's not because anyone put a gun to my head and say this is your reality that's just how I chose to react to those situations that I was put in or those those low moments that I found myself in and what you come to see is sometimes Shit is perpetrated upon you and you find yourself in a low period. But a lot of times in my life, I put myself in these low periods because of my own decisions. I say all that to say this. I didn't let all the bullshit that I was going through stop me from being the man that I know I am and doing what I, I wanted to go out and do, which was I wanted to become the biggest, baddest strength and conditioning resource on the planet because that's how I feel about myself. And I'm not there in terms of the amount of followers and things like that, but I'm still very successful in that I set out to get 10,000 subscribers in a year, so in 365 days, and I got the better part of 12,000 in less than a year. Anything I set out to do, I do it. You can do it too. Now, that's just how I tend to communicate things to people when I put out all this free content. It could be something like a bro talk where I'm telling you like, yeah, you can get any kind of chick that you want if you do this and this and that. Or you can be with any kind of guy that you want or you can lift this weight if you do this or you can increase this lift if you do that. You can be lean if you do this. I say that to say there's a way that you can go about working smarter so that your hard work isn't misapplied. You can work hard infinitely and not go anywhere with it. There are people in the hood that I grew up with that are just as hard of a worker as me, if not more so. I'm lazy about certain shit, full disclosure. But they're just as hard of a worker and they're still where they're at and I'm where I'm at. And that's not to take anything away from them. But hard work alone just frankly isn't going to take you anywhere. It has to be hard work accompanied with the smart things. And I am that person where I'm going to bridge that gap between people who are hard workers that want success, that see success for themselves in the weight room, and the actual results that they're trying to get to that they can't because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. That's why I give all this information away for free. And I only charge you if you want us, you know, you want me to invest the time in you specifically. And half the time I'll tell you like, look bro, you don't need this. 
get out of my face. Go use one of my free programs. I made a three hour video about this. Why are you asking me this question? I actually get mad when people don't want to help themselves. You call that a, a, a quirk of bald omni, man, I guess you could say. I get mad when people don't want to help themselves. Those, those questions that I get where I'm like, refer to this video. That's me wanting you to have the resource, but I also get a little bit mad. You don't know that I made the video more than likely, but in my head, I'm like, damn, I made this three hour video and they didn't even try to look for it. That's just my quirk, I'm being funny. I'm, I'm critiquing myself. I say all I have to say this. It's not fake positivity to tell people you can do whatever you want to do. There was, um, and I don't, I don't usually let nothing really get to me for real. Obviously, like y'all know, I have somewhat of a, uh, I guess you could say, a sharp tongue. Y'all see the memes I post. You, you know, I have no issue saying anything to anybody, but I, didn't, I don't usually let it get under my skin. But there was a comment under that video that I did with Alex that really got under my skin because I was very careful in communicating everything as to not invalidate people's hard work and their lack of results and to empower them and inspire them. And the people that deserve that success, that deserve these results, that deserve these gains, they're gonna listen to that video, become inspired, and not only inspired, have the tools to achieve whatever strength goals that they want. The people who deserve it will, because they're not taking it personally, but there are people, I am sure, listen to that video and just like this young cat said felt fake positivity I am that's such a it just speaks to my belief in life I guess I, could, I should say there are people that perfect example let's just say you see a group of people drowning right you help some of them and you teach some of them how to swim and some of them make it to shore and go on and you know achieve greatness all right there are other people that you try to tell them like look okay you know stop flapping your fucking legs and do this so you can tread water and then swim over here and this is how you do that and then let me, let me get you up out of this water because you're drowning you can do it there's no reason you can't look at all these other people that did there are people that will take that and be so absorbed in their own biases that they can't get up out that water that they're going to say fuck you how dare you say that to me you, you don't see i've been trying to swim what do you mean try to swim like this I've, you, I've been trying to swim all this time get the fuck out my face i can't get out this water what do you mean perfect fucking comparison i'm just trying not to use a giga brain word some people in life are just not going to be successful. It is what it is. And most of the time, it's not because of inherent fucking limits that are just thrust upon us. Every disadvantage was thrust against me in life. I know tons of other people who I respect greatly where every disadvantage was thrust upon them in their life. We each have one or a few strengths though that we can use to get about that. That's why I released that video. Here are different strengths that you could have in strength and conditioning. Part of that is to tell you, like, look, you know, here's how it applies to training, but it's to start to get you to think about yourself a little bit differently. You know what I mean? I'm a person where I have ultimate self-confidence. You, you, you can't tell me about myself. Who are, who are you to tell me about me? Not being, you know, ego or anything like that, but look at where I'm at in life and look at where you're at in life. The people who critique you the harshest and try to get you to feel bad about yourself, you have something that they want. That's always the case. I know because I've been there, you know what I'm saying? So I've been that hating ass dude. We've all been there. We've all been that hating ass dude. I don't know where I'm going with this and I don't know where how long we're going to talk here. There's just a lot of things that I wanted to tap in with y'all and give you some food for thought. Moral of the story with that is, is that just put your head down and work and learn and you can get whatever you want, man. There's one other thing that I wanted to talk about. So a lot of y'all younger or younger males, I look at my analytics sometimes. I don't really, I probably should, but a lot of y'all are younger males between the ages of 17 and like 24. 
we all go through similar things in life collectively as males in that time period. So we go through relationships, breakups, friendships, loss of friendship, loss of this and that. There's something that I wanted to offer my um, perspective on that kind of gives you gotta give you guys food for thought in terms of how you should conduct yourself when you start to achieve things and you know acquire things as you continue to work and so on i watched this video the other day where god was talking about how this is along the same uh line of what i'm talking about today he started his, his youtube channel He's successful now, has 250,000 subscribers, and he didn't have shit or nobody believing in him when he started that. No friends, nobody really but his wife that believed in him. And now where, he, where he's at, where he's at now, he has tons of people reaching out to him for help, this, this, and that. People with their hands out, wanting him for the things that he has and not necessarily wanting to be around him for the person that he is. He spoke to something that is very important. There are people in your life that are just going to want you for the things that you have and always come with a handout. Those people will only remember the last thing that you did for them or the last thing that you didn't do for them. Perfect example. Someone I, you know, very close to, been around all my life, always had a help for them at a point in time you just get tired of helping people that aren't helping themselves that's why i am the way that i am now to an extent because people like that have always seen that i had a bigger heart than i care to have i guess you should say it's a gift and a curse i want to help everybody that i care about but at the same time i got to break my own heart so to make sure that i'm good so that I can be in a position to handle my responsibilities as a man. My responsibilities as a man are to a few things. They are not to my parents. They are not to any friends that I have. They are not to anybody outside of myself and anything that has to do with my household and anything that, has to, that doesn't have to do with my work and how I earn a living. If you lie outside of those things, you in terms of my responsibility to you i can do something if i can but i'm not going to overextend myself to help anybody it's my boundary don't let nobody use you but there was this individual who i bear no harsh feelings towards we still talk um here and there but there was a situation where i kind of had to check them wherein they had their hand out asking for shit all the time. And I told them, like, look, man, I'm tired of fucking helping you. What, what you mean, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you don't do anything to separate yourself from the people who are holding you down in this situation that you're in. And this video that I watched resonated with me because he is, t he said, excuse me, he said verbatim what I'm saying to you now. Literally. And this is just human nature. That's how you can tell this is real shit. I said, you don't do anything to help yourself get out of the situation that you're in or associate with people who don't put you in this scenario that you're in. If you don't fucking do something to help yourself, I'm not going to help you, period. You can take of that what you want to, but I'm not telling you what to do or no shit like that, but you, look, if you don't do this, I don't have anything to, to, to offer to you. Blah, say, blah, yeah, okay, bro, blah, say, blah. They come back, they need, help again and i'm like okay this this and that did you change this no well, well fuck you then man i don't have no help for you i said it just like that and i'd say it again because you saying fuck you to me by not helping yourself after being told this is what you need to do that goes to show you just like i said earlier there are people that are drowning that want to help themselves and there are people that are drowning that just want to be fucking where they're at in the water in the muck I don't fuck with people like that. So it was a long period of time where I wasn't speaking to this individual until they got their shit together. And I don't associate myself with people who aren't cut from that cloth. And I don't have any problem cutting off people that are like that. 
nor should you. So if you have a girlfriend that's cheating on you or your shorty is like doing things that you don't like, I don't care what it is. As long as your boundaries don't have to do with fucking insecurities that you have. So for example, if you tell, you know, your chick or your dude, look, I don't like when you, it could be something stupid. Like, I don't like when you call me this, this or that, or when, you know, you treat me like this, this and that, and they continue to do it. There's tons of people out here that are, you'll be attracted to that won't do what this person refuses to stop doing. So kick them to the curb, man. You have an employer that's not treating you right. You voice your concerns. They keep doing it. Get another job. They're going to convince you. People are going to convince you that they're fucking invaluable pieces of your life when they're not, quite frankly. Okay? So if I remove people from my life, that hasn't stopped me from doing anything that I did or have done in my life that I have achieved. Because I achieve things off the strength of my own capabilities. Opportunities that I find for myself. These opportunities aren't handed to me. I do things to put myself in the position to have opportunities. You should approach life that way as well, in my opinion. Who the fuck am I to tell you that? I'm just, talk I'm just talking. But there's a time where that harshness and that cruelty that you have to adopt, because this is a very cruel fucking world we live in, man. It, I I've seen and been through some wild ass shit that I'm never gonna speak about on camera or allude to or talk about because I don't care to share it with you just to say that I've been through a lot in life. You have to be cruel in this cruel world that we live in. But there, there just comes a time and a place where that's not always called for. What did I say about friendship? There are people that are gonna you know, want you for the things that you have and there are people that are gonna want you for you. Let me talk about my woman and a, a particular friend that I just reached out to recently and reconciled with. I am used in my relationships with women to quite frankly, it being very transactional, whether it's a, a physical transaction or when I was younger and more in, impressionable, but like a transactional transaction where it was like, okay, I do these things for you and then you do this for me. I buy this for you and then you give me your time. We've all been there. You can't buy love, guys. It's either there or it's not. You can't buy someone giving a fuck about you. It's either there or it's not. They either give a fuck or they don't. You know what I mean? And when I find myself on that end of the spectrum, on the opposite end of the spectrum, I now found myself being very physically transactional. I'm only fucking with you because you're bad. You know what I'm saying? I'm only fucking with you because I want you to suck my dick, this, this, and that. That's not a way to be either. When I met my woman, I was on the opposite ends of the toxicity spectrum. I have never encountered someone that didn't care about what I had, what I didn't have, the types of things that I've done, as long as I didn't allow them to define me. And I've never met someone that challenged me to be better without making that conditional to be around them. Those are the kind of people that you want to have in your life. I'm not just with her because she's beautiful, she's bad, and this, this, and that. She is. And I'm not just saying that because she's, if she, because she's my woman because I wouldn't be in a relationship with nobody that's just bad. That's partly my ego, but just to say that it's just not her beauty and her physicality is the reason why I'm with her. I'm with her because of the content of her character in the mutually yoked nature of our relationship. There was a time where I was holding her to standards that I set for the types of chicks that I was fucking with beforehand. So as I said, it was very physically transactional. If I saw certain things, even if I started to like the broad, I would turn my emotions off completely and separate myself from it as to break my own heart before my heart can be broken by someone else. That's a very useful tool to have. It's a tool that can become misused if that's the only tool that you have. That's something that is one of my character flaws. I have these great tools and ways of traversing this cruel world that we live in that allow me to keep moving forward, to not allow things to 
encumber me as I try to become more successful, as I become more successful. But they get misapplied at times. People that you care about sometimes get hurt. I can admit that. There's been instances where I've jeopardized my relationship. Never infidelity or nothing like that. But just being too cruel and handling things as if it's a one-man show. Nothing specific I'm going to put out there. Because like I said, I don't care to talk. It's none of your fucking business. You got to learn to not always peel an onion with a chainsaw. Likewise, a friend of mine, Cam. We had words concerning some of this cruelty that I can demonstrate towards people. And I took it more as a misjudgment of my character. Because to me... I'm only this way because of what I went through. And I had to check myself because I always tell people, you are not what you go through. And I, the same self-talk bullshit I tell y'all to not do, I did the same thing. And they were just holding me accountable, ultimately. I didn't like what they said. I still don't like what they said. But it was fair. It wasn't a judgment. It was just here. I'm holding you accountable as a friend. I'm someone where I grew to be so ruthless with my anyone I consider a friend that I distance myself from them very cruel thing to do to someone that genuinely cares about you as I became more successful started to acquire more things be able to do more things they consistently showed the same desire to want to be my friend and I'd play them to the left and this this and that and it took me listening to that video that I told y'all about wherein there are people that just want you for you and people who just want you for your things. It took me listening to that. And the only person that I ever thought of, that I thought of when he said that, that has ever fit the bill of, they just want your friendship off the strength of you, was Cam, was this individual. So I reached out to him. There's gonna be people that care about you that do things that you don't like, say things that you don't like. You have to find the people that are, you cut them off and fuck them, right? There's app that's absolutely, that's absolutely called for in this cruel world that we live in because they'll fucking hold you back. But there are also people on the other hand that are worth keeping in your life. People like Cam, where they're only around if they say something you don't like it's either you know we all make mistakes or they're holding you accountable keep those people close and work things out with them don't just cut everybody off don't be become someone that ends up fucking alone because you remove things from your life that don't serve you People are going to end up fucking lonely in this generation we live in where we're obsessed with removing things from our life that don't serve us, that aren't necessarily always pleasant. And we're going to die alone for that. This video is to just give y'all food for thought, talk a little bit about that, give y'all some uh, life experience from not necessarily the oldest guy. I'm closer to 30 than I am 20. Um, but someone who's very well experienced and has been through a lot of things. Y'all be easy.